morning, guys. My name is Burrito. I do Raid Shadow Legends content, and I love my wife. And today we're going to be talking about how hard are you farming for pinpoint gear. So this post came up, and I saw it last night. I wanted to get to it, but I just didn't. And then this popped up this morning. Um, it's currently 6.56. I woke up at 6 today. And it's the Odin's Trial Tournament. So this word got passed down to me by tickle does rsl it's another content creator and he told me not to dump all of my energy at the release of odin's event of the odin uh, event dungeon he was like there's going to be a tournament specific uh, specifically for odin's dungeon and here it is as well as new champions and a new event dungeon the asgard divide is also bringing a new type of tournament, the Odin's Trial Tournament. It's the first of its kind, and it's focused specifically on the event dungeons, but it works exactly like other dungeon-related tournaments. Simply earn as many artifacts and accessories from the event dungeon as possible to get your hands on awesome rewards. One question I often get a lot is, what is the best dungeon, what is the best stage for you to farm in order to, I guess, get the most efficient points? Or like, what's the most efficient stage to farm for the points to get the tournament, right? And to answer this specific question, it kind of just depends, right? If the points that we get are based on as many accessories and artifacts that we get, as well as the, um, you know, it says the better gear you win, the more points you earn, as well as the, the rarity and the rank of the gear. Well, it should be that, for an example, let me show you here. Um, like, look look at this, for an example, the, the Fire Knight Tournament. It's very uh, faction specific, but basically if you, uh, where the Dwarves, Shadowkin, and Sylvan Watchers, right? So if you go here, obviously if you're able to do hard 10, and then get the five, six star, maybe even mythical gear, that's gonna do you very well. But you could also just drop down to like stage one, right? And let's just say if, if dwarves are the only thing, let's just go in with both of these nuts, right? Um, so, you know, trying to collect my thoughts here and, and get my idea out, it, it all just kind of depends on what is the, to, to answer the question directly, it all just depends on what is the highest fastest and most consistent dungeon that you can do all right so just for doing this it's only like a two star savage rare but we get i think it's three or ten points let me see here it shows up right here it's it's nothing crazy where are we well three points but look <laughs> no one else is doing this so i might even i might even dip into this a little bit but it, you know what i mean um, so it, it's based off of the gear that you get and what you could do, right? If you really wanted to, and you're focused on just getting the rewards that are on the side here, which we don't know what they are, but it could be a thing if you wanted to, and I've done this before, I've showed you guys this before, you could just do like whatever the lowest stage is that you can, but like do it really fast and you could still get points for that. But the best answer is the most efficient stage you can farm is the one that you can do fastest and most consistently. What do I mean by consistently? Uh, consistently, I mean the stage that you don't fail at, basically. So if it's stage 20 for you and you do it really fast, look at the jump between 20 and 21, by the way. If it's stage 20 and you can do 20 really fast and it's like 100%, then do 20. But if you're doing stage 21 or 24 or 25, and well, I guess... If you're doing 25 at 10 seconds, then, you know, obviously go do 25. But if you're only at 20 and you can do it in like two seconds or something, you, you guys get the idea, then do that. And that's basically what you want to do for, um, for that event when it does come up. All right. So it says, how hard are you farming for pinpoint gear? Are you just using free energy, some gems, all gems? And I've asked this question in my YouTube comments, I've asked this question in uh, the in-game chat in channel two, asking people how hard they are farming for <laughs> for pinpoint gear. And uh, sorry, I'm not gonna let the joke go. And a lot of people are just saying, hey, I'm not doing it. 
I'm not farming for gear. How hard are you? I'm not. That's the response. Not uh, farming for gear, I mean. Or this guy says it too. I'm not. Most of my energy besides daily iron twins will stop once I get ring and amulet from my arbiter for an extra 10 speed. That's a good idea. Then I'll wait for dungeon events to grind since I can't farm past 20 comfortably. I brought my arbiter from 408 to 420 speed with a couple of blue jewelries. That's good. That's really good. 408 is already insane. That's really fast. Like, what? how fast is my arbiter? There's some people out there with some crazy fast arbiters. Mine's at 398. I'm pretty sure if I got pinpoint gear, let me let me see if I even got any right now. Let's see, where's the pinpoint at? So this one brings 20 accuracy. I'm gonna farm a little bit and let's see. You get 10% speed if I were to get a three piece here. But yeah, I'm definitely gonna take his idea and get Arbiter up. Even if I just get a couple of blue pieces like this, then then I'll uh what do you call it? Throw, uh, I'll slap that on Arbiter. And I should probably slap it on Siffy too, because my Siffy's kind of slow. 382. You know what I mean? And, um, let me just do this real quick. Yeah, it's a, it's a great way to get your speed up if you really need to. Oh shit, I didn't think about that. I really appreciate the suggestion. I'll start farming straight away. Yeah, I didn't think about this either. This is, this is a really big, big thing here. Going from 408 to 420 speed, that 10% bump in speed is insane. Side note, I just, I love not even having to use a unkillable team anymore. Harima and Makage have really pumped, bumped this up. Of course, there's, you know, those champions there too, but yeah. All right. Um, let me get back here. Trying to balance efforts between getting Primal Quartz in the events and hitting the Asgard dungeon. Been doing the same thing, farming middle for now, but I'll get back to it once I'm done. Farmed a bunch of spiders, a uh, bunch of super raids. Farmed a bunch of spiders. Farmed a bunch of super raids with a low, with a slow 100% win rate auto team for the last few days while I was at work. Workable four piece set for a siege champ. Now we'll do a bit here or there to get um, at least several sets over the next eight weeks. What's your team? I don't have Seer. Uh, what is he, what's he using? High res Pytheon. UD, that's good. 500 plus is good. UDK, Harima, Mithrala, hybrid Wukong. Yeah, I can see this working. Wukong is the only one getting stripped. UDK is soaking up the boss hits. Takes about seven minutes to bring down the champs. Once they're down, they're never revived. Goes down fast afterward. Yeah, and that's basically the, the strategy. And you know, there's nothing wrong with this. If your run takes seven minutes to do, but it's a high stage or, you know, it's a comfortable stage for you, there's nothing wrong with this. Because, again, he's doing it while he's at work. He's not sitting there manually the whole run, which is essentially the goal, right? I mean, I've done events where I leave my computer on or I leave my phone on overnight and I just farm Sand Devil, right? In fact, there's a lot of people, there's a lot of Krakens who just who have the money to just dump thousands and thou tens of thousands of energy into events and their computers are on just like all the time. And it's insane, bro. Like these guys are on just another another level, but this is pretty good. Uh, seven minutes, but you're at work. You don't even really notice it. Just like when you're sleeping, you don't even really notice it. You just wake up, boom, it's done. And that's you know one of the greatest things about uh, this game that I, I just enjoy. Some people don't agree with it, but I mean like that, that's a topic for another discussion. People are like, well, you're not really playing the game, and I'm just like, well, I mean you kind of are, right? Because you have to set the you have to set everything up. It's not like the game is gonna put the gear on the champions and put the synergy together by itself. Like there is some thought, collaboration, that goes into this. So you know every event since the dungeon opened up has been useless to me so i've just been farming oh, i've been using all daily energy got a bit of accessories but the ar artifact drop right on stage 30 is pretty awful hmm i believe it i'm not doing 30 on this account i'm doing 30 on my main account but i haven't done anything on my on my main account yet because i've been waiting for this event that's about to start in 20 hours so i've been saving i think at like 10,000 energy right now it'll probably be like 11 or 12 by the time the event starts so we'll see so yeah i've got 10,000, and i'm just waiting for this event to start i'm purposely not doing dungeon divers yet because i'm waiting for it to coincide with the odin's trial tournament 
only been using my spare energy in between some tourneys, waiting on the Hell Hades site to, to update so we can get the rates. I'll see the rates to get an idea. Yeah. Um, I didn't know that he he shows drop rates on the dungeons. That's that's uh, that's news to me. Let me see here. Just daily energy, not investing gems, top arena players, so not too bothered. Yeah. And that's the thing, right? If you're at a and this is not just with this specific dungeon, but just with anything, right? If you're if you're at a point where like it doesn't affect you, then you're well in your right to not bother with certain content or with anything, right? So case in point, like I, I put out a video yesterday talking about, you know, is Freya worth it? And you know, some of the where's the where's the rates? Where are the drop rates? Where are the drop rates for? I'm not seeing it. Anyway, um, you know, some some of the people were just like, "Oh, you um, you don't understand. Freya is gonna be game changing." Um, and I'm like, I, I understand that. I understand that for a lot of people, the greater majority of people, she's going to be game changing. I'm not diminishing her value. I think she's a solid. Personally, I think she's an A, A plus tier champion. I don't think she's S tier, but then again, I'm biased. I'm jaded. I have an account. I have multiple accounts where I'm able to do basically everything and not worry about anything. I can just cycle through champions for me. And I'm only speaking for me. She's not going to bring anything new to me that I can't already do. Now, the counter argument to that is, well, you know, Brito, what if there's an event where you have to use specific champions or like, what if there's a comp that comes out X, Y, and Z? What if you go up against Amius and you can't use the champions that you already have? Those are all good points for people that care about those points. I don't care about Amius. I don't bother with Amius. So Amius isn't going to matter, matter to me. Specific events or tournaments where I have to use these specific champions. I'm probably not going to do it. And you know what? I'm going to sleep well at night. I'm not going to give a shit. Well, what about um, uh, specific comps? You know, uh, they they talked about like the Wixwell fusion and Eostrid. You know, a lot of people were like, oh, you're going to regret missing out on Eostrid and and um, and Wixwell. And I'm just like, I don't think so. You know, I've um, I've been able to, uh, you know, do just fine without them. You know what I mean? Like I, I throw my keys on on auto for Hydra. Uh, I, I can do pretty much everything else that I that I need to. I don't even know where Wixwell is on this thing, but it's just like I'm I'm fine. I'm not I'm not tripping. I'm not over here regretting anything. So yeah. again, I'm not saying that those champions aren't amazing. I'm just saying that for me, and I only ever really speak for me, not not really like going to be game changing for me, right? So you know, Ofrey is going to be OP in arena, sure. But if you're a top level player or if you're a plat level player such as myself which is you know not i'm not flexing but i'm trying to give you guys perspective where i'm coming from and why i'm saying this for myself she's not gonna be like like seriously think about it guys am, am i gonna freya and, and i'm sorry i'm going on the sidebar here but like think about it am, am i gonna put oh by the way pix neil <laughs> i forgot hold on where's, where's pix neil at check this out Oh, hold on, where? Oh, there she is. She's right there. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, like, am I gonna put? Am I gonna put um, Freya in over like a Yumiko or Makage or like Warlord or Duchess or Pythion or Cardiel? I don't think so. But again, the whole point of the video was to open up the conversation and and talk about it because i could be wrong you know what i mean she she could she could be op for for me in arena but you know i won't really know until i get her but at first glance when looking at her kit you know she doesn't really stand out to me as anybody that that i should like jump for and go for you know what i mean and like yeah i saw ash's video on her and you know, I saw that one time that she hit for like 436 on a decapitated head. You know, those conditions, sure. Hitting for 436 on a decapitated head um, on hard is pretty cool, right? But am I going to put her in? Like, if I'm talking about damage, am I going to put her in 
my team over like you know somebody else like wukong who hits for millions or or newt who hits for millions or like a great support champion like padrig you know what i mean so again it's perspective sorry i went on that tangent but i don't know i just i felt like it so that's where we're at but where are you guys in terms of farming for pinpoint gear how are you guys farming for pinpoint gear or have you been just waiting for this event that's coming up this guy says just daily energy not investing gems oh i already i already read that i read that already not sure i'll bother as an end game player unless i'm willing to buy energy packs and put 100 100k energy I don't think I've ever seen 100k energy on my account before. I think the most I've seen was like 40k. And I saved for quite some time. But 100k? I'm not going to be able to get a usable set for G4 Live Arena, so I won't even try. I like this. I won't even try because, you know, you're not going to bother. And, you know, that's, that's basically the game, right? Respect. You can choose whether or not you want to do something or not, you know. Because if you don't mind, it don't matter, right? Maybe if, do, if they do a 3x event, I'll change my mind. True. Don't sleep on the two-piece. I, I agree with this. I agree. Don't sleep on the two-piece for, for most people, right? But I'm not going to tell this guy what he, what he should or shouldn't do or what he knows and doesn't know, right? Because if he's saying to himself, it, it's not going to matter to him, then I'm going to believe that he knows what's best for him, right? Because I don't know what's best for him. You don't know what's best for him. You don't know what's best for me. I don't know what's best for you, right? Everybody has different accounts. And it's okay to talk about opinions, but you know, let's not assume that we know what the other person's situa uh, situation is. I 100% I agree on six star more, but two piece has been uh, has its uses. I promise you haven't clicked on you haven't clicked on yet. I'm not doing it for the set. I'm doing it for the rings and the amulet. Put those two on, you get 10% speed. This guy's actually in my clan, Lord B4. I just realized he was in my clan, <laughs> like uh, last month. Uh, in RV, Roma Victor. Uh, yes, not farming. I'm not, I only went up to 20 and then stopped, which I can see happening because the jump from 20 to 21 is crazy. Unless they make a dedicated event, which, you know, this aged well two days ago. With actually decent rewards, I'm not wasting my energy to get days and other garbage gear. Just to head up, the rate to get pinpoint accessories is actually super high. I want to say it's close to 50% to at least get one pinpoint accessory or artifact. I don't know about the specific rates. I tried to get a good, like, I tried to do my own video trying to assess the drop rates. And I'll be honest with you, I have no idea what I'm doing. So, you know, don't look at that video that I did and take it for face value. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't know where our, uh, I mean, I guess I kind of understand, right? Because pinpoint accessories, you're not really competing with any other sets in terms of accessories, right? Because the only accessories that drop are the pinpoints. Right? Because you're not, you're not getting any other type of accessories. Right? I think. The YouTube, oh, he did get it from Tairaku. Did a rough test. And yeah, that, that you know, it's a rough test. And there's not, I don't think there's a, you know, Darren's gonna, gonna point it out. And I don't think he's wrong. I'm not, I'm, I'm not gonna get into it, but I, I agree with Darren. But I also, I can also appreciate what he, what Tairaku tried to do, which is the same thing that I, I've tried to do. Try to get a, a rough, uh, a rough first glance. Yeah, it's a small sample size, not a ton of data. That again, you can't take for face value, but you can kind of gauge a small direction, right? Because when you're looking at how many runs you need to gauge drop rates in a specific dungeon, you have to consider that I think like one to 300 can give you a rough estimate. I think one to about 3000 will give you more direction but then 3,000 and above runs is probably going to drop the margin of, I guess, error? Not error, but like outliers. I don't know. I, I did, I did, I, I Google search like a, a quick, like how to, how to get the statistics or like how to get the drop rates for a dungeon. And I, I can't even remember. So I don't know enough about it. Obviously I can't explain it, 
because I don't know enough about it. It looks like the drop rate is much higher than people thought it was going to be if you count accessories. But yeah, uh, again, I think accessories, it's just the accessories. Three items a day for the advanced quest. That's good. Spare energy that's all I'm putting in. Drops uh, so many accessories, it's worth it to me. The actual artifact drops. I don't think I've kept a single piece yet. Uh, 20 in 5 seconds, stage 30 in 1 to 3 minutes, pretty good. I've had to disrupt my Seer build to beat stage 30. I actually like that it pushed me to pump 80 speed into my Seer. Free regear this weekend was fruitful. I'm not honestly worried about accessories and extra speed. I was for a bit, then remembered I have like 6 champions that I need to take to the 6, and then 8 to 10 need to finish, finish Masteries 4. So, yeah, some people are doing it. It looks like half people are doing it and half people are not, but um, <laughs> hard as fuck. Waiting for a 2x or a 3x event, all my energy, using up leftover energy, and uh, cat poop says laughing emoji.